Hey, what's up, you guys? Yes. Today I'm going to show you how I made this mouse house. A uh, side note, every time I say mouse, you could just substitute for whatever tiny animal you have. Okay, thanks. It's for my four little baby mice. I love them so much and they deserve nice things. So I'm going to show you how to give your mice nice things too. I like to start out my house building with a drawing about what I want to do. So I have a bedroom, a foyer if you want to be fancy, and a food room at the top. You can see this has food shoot up there. So there's at least two exits into every room. That's because mice are paranoid little creatures and they like to be able to run away. So I have a little platform at the top as well for their wheel to go on because they like to run on that thing, but it um, makes a really loud noise at the glass. So I like to set it up on something. So why not put it up on their house? So I'm gonna keep it real with you, Chief. I only got a 10 gallon tank because I thought I was only gonna have two mice, but then one of them had a baby. So it's smaller than it needs to be, but I don't have a lot of money, so I'm not gonna buy a new one. So that's why these measurements are a little bit smaller, but if you have a bigger tank, you can make them bigger. The piece I just showed you is piece A, which is the front piece, and I'm tracing it onto an Amazon box to make a piece B, which is the back piece. And I'm gonna take my boyfriend's X-Acto knife and cut these out. So I'm just gonna keep cutting out every piece that I need is according to the diagram that I drew and the measurements that I took of my own tank. So this took me a long time and it was pretty boring. So I'm not gonna make you sit there and watch it, but just know that I did it. After I cut out some of the pieces, I realized it was getting confusing, so I just started labeling them as I kept going, and I labeled the ones I already cut out. And this is the part where it starts to actually look like a house. I'm going to add in all the details I want. I didn't entirely draw these details into the diagram, but some of them I did, some of them I didn't. It doesn't really matter. So I'm adding in a nice little window so I can see if they've eaten their food, and then I'm going to put in their main door entrance, and my cat made an appearance in the background. Great, love it. Whatever you do with this part is really up to you if you actually want to do this and you're not just watching this to be a creep. Uh, but yeah, go ahead and cut everything out that you want to cut out and move on with your life. Here I'm using some recycled plastic that I found and I'm just going to make a window. This is so the mice can't hop out of the top windows and hurt themselves. And because it gives a nice little reflection, it's cute, I like it, okay? If you look at the diagram, I made a whole other separate little drawing for side C and that's because it's a little more complex. I wanted to put a ladder on the outside so they could climb up there and sit on the roof, I guess. So I'm just putting in some little pieces of cardboard and seeing how far up I need them to go and how many pieces I need. And then I'm going to lay them double thick and glue them together. I like to use Elmer's glue because it's for kids and I'm assuming kids eat it. Maybe not. I don't know. I never eat glue. Uh, anyway, you can also use duct tape to stick that on there, but they might rip it off to make their beds. And I wouldn't recommend hot glue, but you can, just not too much, but they like to eat it and it's not good for them to eat plastic, which is what hot glue basically is. Then I just wipe them down and let them dry. So I'm going to do the same thing to the inside of side B, which is the back, because piece G, which is the separating piece, is going to need a little ladder for them to get up there into the food room. I think that English made sense? I don't know. Let me know. So anyway, I'm just going to glue down one thickness here because uh, I didn't feel like doing it again. So let's just get to actually building this thing, all right? So I'm just gonna put some duct tape in there on both sides of every seam, and then this is what you kind of get. And then I'm gonna put in piece E, which is the little supporting beam for piece G, and piece H is the little ceiling. Um, ignore piece H for now, because I kind of mess with it a little bit later, so it's not exactly perfect yet. But you know, this is basically what it looks like right now. So like I said, piece G is just going to slide in there and there's going to be a little support beam on wall C in a little bit, but I haven't built that yet because first I want to get rid of this piece of D. So it's kind of in the way, so I couldn't really slide the wheel in when I tried to test it. If your wheel doesn't have um, little clips on the bottom, then go ahead and skip this part. But I wanted to be able to put the wheel in and out without taking the whole piece of G out. And this is the support beam. I'm just going to cut it to size, which I think was four inches, four and a half inches. And then I'm going to tape it to piece C. This will just make sure that piece G doesn't wobble around. Now we can get back to piece H. So I'm going to cut about a centimeter off so then there's enough room for the sliding door to fit in. And I'm going to put the support beam in place so it doesn't fall forward. Except, as you'll see, I kind of made a mistake and made it a bit too low. Yeah, that was a rough time. So I unstuck it and move it up and there we go, we're all good to go now. Did a quick test to make sure it works and then I put a quick tab on the top of piece F and then I put in some side barriers to keep it from falling forward. And this is just showing how you can take out all the pieces to access every room, which you know you have to do sometimes for cleaning purposes. And here's the final project and we can go ahead and move on to painting, yes, the best part. I chose a light blue color. It's a child's paint, so it doesn't really go on the best. I had to do a couple layers, but I just want to make sure that anything I put in their tank is non-toxic. 
because I don't want to accidentally poison them because that would kind of suck. This is what the finished paint job looks like. I added some light blue details and I painted the interior purple. Uh, it's not the best, but you know what? I don't think mice care about interior design too much. So I think we'll be in the clear on that one. So this is really fun and fresh. I'm going to clip the wheel right in there and it's so cute. I love it. It looks like the fanciest little mouse house I've ever seen in my whole life. I'm going to go ahead and put their bowl in there. I would recommend taping it into place, but for right now I'm just going to check to make sure it looks cute. To feed my mice a mixture of their regular bagged food, which is, I don't know, it's like mouse, it's mouse food. I bought it at Walmart. And I give them fresh vegetables almost every day, but since it's winter, sometimes I can't really do that. This is what their last house looked like. They had it for about two or three weeks. I can't really remember. But as you can see, they really destroyed it. And in there is where they made their nest. And I like to just take some of that nest out and then save it for their next one so they know where they're supposed to sleep. It's very important I save their favorite sock before I throw away their old house. They really enjoy nesting with this thing. Don't really know why. It's kind of like their comfort toy, I guess. And I'm also going to put in their uh, Christmas tree that they can chew on with um, all non-toxic paints because it's actually Christmas Eve right now. So I figured they should have some decorations in their tank instead of just around their tank. So sometimes I leave bedding outside for them to pick where they wanna make a bed and sometimes I put it in the room that I want them to nest in. Today I'm choosing this room because I made it specifically for them to nest in and I'm gonna be really upset if they don't use it. And there you go, that's the finished product. Uh, it took me about three hours to make and total I have no idea how much it cost because I used mostly recycled materials that I was gonna throw away anyway. The only thing that I paid for was paint, but I already had it, so I don't really know how much it costs. If you followed along and you made your own house for your little critters, I would love to see it. You can send me a DM on Twitter. It is my personal Twitter, so uh, don't be a creep. But yeah, that's it. Okay, bye.